As we continue to look at three-dimensional figures, in this lesson we're going to talk about surface areas of prisms and cylinders. Now a reminder, a prism is a polyhedron with two congruent parallel bases, and a cylinder is like a polyhedron, but it has circular bases that are congruent and parallel. So let's take a look at a few definitions to help us get talking about these things. First of all, what exactly is a base of a prism or a cylinder? Quite simply, a base is a polygon that defines the overall shape of a polyhedron. <clears throat> Along with the base, or bases, there are lateral surfaces. These make up the walls. And the lateral surfaces are always going to be parallelograms. And these parallelograms, if they're rectangles, will create a right polygon, or sorry, a right prism. If they are more general parallelograms, they will create oblique prisms. So all these surfaces working together create the overall shape. Now when we talk about the height of a prism or a cylinder, this is just the shortest perpendicular distance between the bases. And as we start looking at surface areas, there are a couple different types that are asked for. First is lateral area, which is the total area of the lateral faces that creates the surface between the bases. And then surface area, which is the sum of the lateral area and the two bases. So as we begin working with these, we're going to have some formulas to help us define and create these different areas and we'll just have to work through them. So let's take a look at a few of those formulas now. General formula for prisms and cylinders is as follows. It, it, our surface area is equal to the base areas. So since there's two of them congruent, we'll go two times base area plus lateral area. And Different prisms will or cylinders will be created in different ways with this. Theorem 11.1 helps us to work out this for a prism, and it states the lateral area of a right prism is the product of the perimeter of the base and the height of the prism. So that would be lateral area equals P times H. And then the surface area of a right prism is the sum of the lateral area and the areas of the two bases. So surface area again is lateral area plus two bases. And we use capital B for base, that means the area of that base. Now theorem 11.2 talks the same ideas but about cylinders and it states the lateral area of a right cylinder is the product of the circumference of the base and the height of the cylinder. So in other words, lateral area is equal to 2 pi r h. 2 pi r is the circumference, and then h is the height. And then the surface area of a right cylinder is the sum of the lateral area and the areas of the two bases. So our surface area will equal, once we put it together, 2 pi r h plus, now how do we find the area of a circle? It is pi times the radius squared, and we have two of these, so we get 2 pi r squared. So the surface area of that cylinder is 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. Now we can generalize this for a cylinder because the bases are always circles. For a prism, it's a little bit more difficult. So let's take a look and get a little bit of practice with both types of formulas. So let's find the area, the surface area, of this prism. It is a regular hexahedron. It has regular hexagons for its bases and then the surface, uh, the distance between those bases. So let's start by finding our lateral area. Lateral area is equal to circumference times the height. Well our circumference in this case is 6 times 6 meters 
and then our height is 12 meters. So even though this is laying on its side, the height is still this distance here between the two bases. So 6 times 6 is 36, and 36 times 12 is going to equal 432 meters squared. Now, in order to find the total surface area, we're going to take this lateral area and add in, sorry, we're going to add in two of the base areas. Now, luckily we have recently learned formulas for areas, so we take our 432 and we're going to add in two times that base area, which we're going to develop with our one-half apothem perimeter concept. So area is one-half the apothem and the perimeter. And we already know that our perimeter is 36. So we're taking half of 36. And then our apothem is going to be 3 times the square root of 3 meters. So half of 36 is 18. 18 times 3 is 54. So we have 54 root 3. And putting this together, we get 432 plus 108 root 3 meters squared. Now we can use a calculator to simplify this, but that is the exact area of this uh, prism. Let's take a look at what one would be like if we were working with a cylinder. So the radius of the base of a cylinder is 4 inches and its height is 6 inches. What's the surface area in terms of pi? Well, our surface area we computed earlier was 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. The 2 pi r squared is the two circles. 2 pi r h is the lateral surface area. So we have 2 pi, starting to substitute in, we have a radius of 4 plus 2 pi times that 4 times 6. So we have 2 pi 16 plus 2 pi 24. Uh, we can factor out our 2 pi. So we have 2 pi times 16 plus 24. 16 plus 24 is 40. 40 times 2, we have an area of 80 pi inches squared. That is the total surface area of the cylinder. Now let's try another one. A cylinder has a height of 9 centimeters and a diameter of 10. What is the surface area rounded to the nearest tenth? Okay, so our surface area again is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. This time we have to be careful because what they provide for us is actually diameter. So in order to find our radius, it's half of that. Our radius is 5 centimeters. So we're going to go through and calculate this all out in terms of pi and then simplify at the end. So we have 2 pi, 5 squared is 25, plus 2 pi, 5 times 9 is 45. So we get 50 pi plus 90 pi. 50 plus 90 is 140. So our exact surface area is 140 pi centimeters squared. Now using the value of pi as being 3.14 for a rounded estimate, we get a total of 439 and 6 tenths centimeters squared. So cylinders will tend to be a little bit easier on this because the formula is always the same. Prisms have a little bit of variation due to the different shapes that can make up the base. 
but make sure you have these formulas down for both lateral areas and surface areas of prisms and cylinders. So we're going to use them in our next lesson, which will be the surface areas of pyramids and cones.